Shalom, giving all praise to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shem, Yahweh Shem, Yahweh Shem, Shalom to the 144,000 and the rest of the elect out there, because the Mosai is only coming for the elect, starting with the 144,000. Um, anyway, I'm going to get right into it, and I'm going to entitle this video, Minstress, Minstress Woman Shall Give Birth to Monsters. Minstress Woman Shall Give Birth to Monsters. And when I say woman, I'm talking about Israelite woman. I'm focusing on Israelite woman. Well, all the tribes, but especially the kingdom of Judah, the, the, the southern kingdom tribes. But all the tribes, are, they bring forth monsters. They produce monsters, gremlins, whatever you want to call them. So I'm not going to make this long. So this is a video I was put up by a GMS, uh, GMS, GMS Vegas sit downs 144K. <clears throat> um, the Lord is getting ready to ban two thirds from off the planet. And I, would, I just want to say this. I subscribe to GMS uh, Vegas sit downs 144K, which is uh, his name is uh, Elder. Um, was it Kar um, Karataza? Karataza, because there's a Karataza bar. He's the head of GMS Baltimore. Baltimore, however you say it. And um, the elder right here video, he's based upon, based out in uh, Vegas, Sin City. Anyway, I just want to say this in general. We've been pushing this. The scriptures say, I'm going to quote two scriptures. I'm not going to go to them. Peter made, made the statement and the Apostle Paul made the statement. The Apostle Paul said that you all show the same diligence. Apostle Peter says, give diligence to make that calling and election sure. Now, this elder right here, the elder brother, he's the head of Vegas. And he's, he always puts up videos. He's consistent. Whether he does it every other day, every day, he's consistent in uh, putting up videos. And there's many brothers. I can give you a list of many brothers that consistently put up videos. I'll be here all day uh, going through the uh, list of brothers that put up videos. But then I'll be, if I want to talk about the ones that are not consistent, I'll be, I'll be here all week. Okay? So I just, the spirit just came on me. And said, this brother puts up a lot of videos. And I click on them because they're good, very good, edifying videos. Give me a second here. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Forgive me. Anyway, uh, yeah, and I just want to say this in general that, uh, okay, this elder right here is obviously diligent, always putting up videos. The Saturday night they do the live. But now now that, that camp consists of a handful of men. All those men doing videos. Are they consistently doing videos? He's throwing it out there. Um, The elder of Baltimore, are all the men that's in your camp doing videos consistently? Or they, do they just say, well, he's the head guy. He does all the videos. We just meet on one day of the week. 
you know, you're Israelite on a Saturday and you're a nigga the rest of the week. All of y'all gotta, you know, you know, put that, you know, put 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 your back into it, you know. You know, your spiritual back. You gotta, you gotta be diligent with this thing. You know, if you are part of a camp, there's 20 men in the camp, and there's only like three men that's consistently putting up, you know, videos, and uh, the rest of y'all. With a four, with a forty-seven, whatever twenty, the rest of y'all or whatever, let's say seventeen or whatever, y'all ain't y'all really. You come out maybe on a Saturday. You you holding posts. You may read. You don't do nothing during the week. You may go to classes if brothers call the lead head call for classes. But are you all consistent? Because if you've been in this thing for six months. Six months, you, you're supposed to be able to deal with any Christian pastor. You're supposed to be able to deal with voc that devil vocab Malone, any Jake pastor. You should be able to go head, heads up with so-called Christian scholars. I'm talking about six months. See, I box, you know, yeah, when I was young. But boxing's in my blood. I'm always getting up in the morning, shadow boxing and doing things, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm on this healthy thing now. I just finished having a health smoothie. I don't call it a protein smooth shake or a green smoothie. I call it a health smoothie because it got all kind of things in it, which include protein and everything else, various nutrients. So I always, all, you know, all, all my life as a kid, I always been into active in the martial arts, boxing, uh, you know, the UFC came along. I got into that. I have nobody ever trained me in the UFC, but if you run 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 on me in the street, like you're gonna do something, and you're not a trained martial artist, I'm gonna fucking kill you. In, in inside of, inside of ten seconds, <laughs> I will kill you now. Roll up on me, man. Just one guy. Matter of fact, years ago. I got into a fight with three Simeonites. I was working in a, in a gas station. When you got, it's like after, it was like 12, one o'clock in the morning. So three Simeonites rolled up and I fell asleep because I'm at the window with the, it's closed in, bullet, bulletproof glass. And um, I, I normally fall asleep. Like, and so I fell asleep. So the guy knocked on the window and I didn't hear any kind of banged on the window and I kind of got up and looked and they all started laughing at me. Because the way I got up, I might have had some dribble, dribble coming down my lip. So I got so fucking mad. But I was I was in my 20s, man. Uh, and I was in the, heavy in the martial art. That's I guess that's before boxing. Maybe I don't I don't remember. But it had to be 79, 80, 81, maybe. And um, so I got so mad that I got out. I opened up the, the door and I confronted them. Right. So them guys, one guy came at me. And I did, and I did, uh, I did like some uh, Aikido, Aikido moves, which I never did. I, I never trained in Aikido, but I did some Aikido moves that I learned from uh, Steven Seagal with the movies. So the spur said, just take one, throw them in the other guy. So they all three came at me. So I grabbed one, spun him around, threw him at, at the other guy. The other guy came. I grabbed him, threw him around, and threw and threw him at the other guy. There was one time when I grabbed one of them. And threw them, threw them at both. So they kept coming at me, and I kept grabbing them and throwing them, grabbing them and throwing them, grabbing them and throwing them. Then I said, "Let me just go back in. Let me just go back in there." So I went back in the in the thing. Then I got a then I got a hoe, which is a gardening tool that was there, and I showed them. I said, "Man, I'll fucking knock your fucking head off." That's when I was, you know, I saw that. That's, that's when the spur got on me. Where I, I'll fight you in a minute. You know, back then. You know, if I didn't like something that you said, I'll punch you dead in the face. You know? Anyway, I said all that to say this. Roll up on me and you don't you ain't a martial artist, you're gonna get you're gonna get fucked up. You're going in, you're going to the hospital. That's for sure. But anyway, I don't know why I got all into that. But let me get back into this. Please forgive me. That was my a little rant of mine. But I know y'all are cracking up. 
But anyway, um, getting back to this here. I saw this video. Please forgive me again for my rant. I like to rant sometimes. I'm like two, not even two and a half minutes into the video. And, and this part comes up where well, you got this kid might be like three years old. He might be five. He might be six. They're not even all together. They don't, they're, they're not even 10 years old or whatever, 15 years old. He might be six. He might, and these are from out of Chicago. It said, pray for the youth. These Chicago kids too young for this behavior. If you watch the movie, if you watch the movie uh, Tales from the Hood, the Spike Lee joint, I saw that movie in the theater. It was a good movie. It was a horror movie, but it was an excellent movie, man. And um, me and um, the other apostles, we watched it because I got it on. I think I got it on DVD. If I do, I'm going to watch it. But um, at the end of the movie, there was these, you know, three drug dealer, you know, hood niggas, whatever you want to call them. And it was based in L uh, L.A. And they was in a funeral home. Uh, what was the whole thing? I think they were hiding drugs and dead bodies and shit like that or whatever the case may be. But the, but the funeral home director was a man by the name of Mr. Sims, which was uh, this guy. Uh, what the hell is his name? He, he was he was in the uh, that TV show, the Mod, the Mod Squad. He was a uh, Lincoln. I forget his 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 uh, his his actual name. He was in Sugar Hill with uh, uh, this guy. Um, who was that? The guy that played uh, uh, in the movie, uh, the vampire series, not Spike Lee. Can't even, I can't even remember his goddamn name. Like this bitch. He got locked up for three years on a tax, tax evasion. Somebody help me out. Help me out. Can't even think of his name. But anyway, he played in that movie, Sugar Hill. He was a father. But he also played in the movie, you know, tells him the hood and at the end of the movie them three drug dealers slash hood niggas and you hate them niggas all throughout the movie you just there's a build up hate for them niggas and um there's three coffins and uh he they go to the coffin and they open it up and the one nigga open up the coffin and it's him with a suit on you know and another another nigga open up his coffin is they all three in the coffin so then um Mr. Sims finally reveals himself as the devil. And he said, this ain't no, he said, this ain't no funeral home. And this ain't the terror dome either. He said, welcome to hell, motherfuckers. Then, then the fire came out of nowhere. You had the nigger woman dancing in the fire. But anyway, that um, Mr. Sims made a statement. He was talking about hood niggas, you know, gremlins, drug dealers, whatever you want to stick up kids. And he made a statement. He said, do you, rehab do you rehabilitate them? He said, no, you just kill them. Now, recently, recently, Dr. Umar Johnson, I watch him too. He was doing a lecture and he had some other jakes critiquing the lecture that he did. So if they would watch play part of the video, then it would stop and speak on it. Then somebody, I believe, in the audience asked a question about these drug dealers, these hood niggas, you know, these gremlins, these stick-up kids. What do we do to them? And normally, he'll have, like, if you psychologically if you do this, do that. He just, he lost, and he said, he said pretty much the same thing Mr. Sims said. He said, there's nothing you can do about them. Just kill them. And he said it with anger, and these guys were laughing at it. Well, you know what? He made a he made a a a, a, um, a true he made a, a a true statement. That was a factual statement. You can't rehabil rehabilitate these these gremlins. You got to kill them, like in the movie Gremlins. How did they get rid of the gremlins? They put, had them go all into a movie theater. The, the movie that was shown was Snow White because they're enamored by the white woman and the white man. 
Because Jake don't be killing white people. They kill Jake. Because they have an innate fear of the white man because they believe that they're God. That's that whole psychological ill shit. So what happened was the guy and the girl, after they got him in the movie, the, it was, it was a Snow, Snow White and the, Seven, and the Seven Dwarfs. And when the movie opened up, they were singing that song, Oh, I ho, I ho, it's off to work I go. And they, when, that, when that song started singing, they started acting like a bunch of niggas. They, had, they were throwing popcorn. Motherfucking, you, you heard gunshots. And then outside of the theater, you had the, the guy and the girl, they set the theater on fire and they got rid of them because they couldn't get rid of them any other way. The first gremlin, Magwai was the Chinese word that means devil. They said that was an Uncle Tom. Then that Uncle Tom produced niggas, gremlins. These are little gremlins right here. And I feel bad for them. See, they can be, they can be uh, re-educated if you get them in time. He got a, a stogie in his mouth. He got this a little toy gun. So where do they get this from? They get this from the, the niggas in the neighborhood, their fathers, their mothers. Well, the father's out the household. She normally have another nigga in the house every other day, a different nigga. So them niggas that deal with these gremlins' mother, they pick up what these guys do. Let me do this. Let me do this. Okay, this is like a little toy gun. They got the crazy hairdos. And you Jakes with the crazy hairdos, you got some psychological problems, man. IUIC, well, if a woman or a man have sex with a woman, you know, before they get married, years down the line, she has psychological problems. Look, you got guys in the IUIC that got all, all kind of crazy dreads. Where you get the dreads, the long hair, that's psych there's a psychological thing that you got in you, man. Man ain't supposed to have no long hair. Thus saith the scriptures. Let me bring it back. See, they kind of they posing like Jake. Got the wife beater on. He ain't got a wife, but he got a wife beater on. Look at that. This little this little big head gremlin. That's a that's a toy gun, and he got a a a, a stogie in his mouth. That's a cigar. C cigar, cigarette. Look at this. He got it. Who, who, where do you think they got that from? They got that from the Jakes out there around. That's that's their whole. That's all they know. That's all they know. Anyway, let me come back to my story. When I went into a rant, you know, one of the things I did was I box, right? So I box active. I competed in tournaments and nationals and all that, and. Uh, actively for about two years, three years, but it was always in my blood, right? So I can, I can, um, I made a statement in the video, please forgive me, I'm all over the place, that if you've been in this thing for six months, you should, you're supposed to be a teacher already. You're supposed to be doing videos consistently, whether it's, whether it's every other day, whether it's every day, whether it's two or three videos a day, Let's say you missed two days. Well, you should come back and do maybe two or three videos. You should always be out there. If you got to work on a day when you go out to camp, don't say, oh, I had to work on that day. But if I didn't have to work, I would be at the camp. OK, well, guess what? Are you off on Sundays? Yes, but I'm with my girl and the kids on Sundays. Well, guess what? That's the day that you maybe go out an hour by yourself. Whatever. We're not, look, if you've been in this thing for six motherfucking months, ain't no excuse. You should be a teacher. So I'm going to go back to my box. And if I was to teach you how to box inside of six months, you'll be looking like a pro. You'll be, they'd be this guy, pro. how many years you been boxing? For 10 years? No, I've just been boxing for six months. How you learn that quick? I'm going to teach you how to, how to shoot joints for real. I'm going to teach you how you're going to be looking like Mayweather. You're going to be looking like um, 
Terrence Crawford. You're going to be looking like, um, what's the brother, uh, Boots Ennis. And dep depending on your God-given gifts, you, you'll look You'll, you'll look good based upon your God. I'll work with your God-given gifts. So now I use, I said all that. I went into all that rant about me getting in a fight. Don't roll up on me to really start going into the boxing scenario. If I train you for six months, you be fucking people up in the boxing thing. All right? Six months. Guaranteed six months, especially if you're a Jake. Let me work with you for six months. And you and people be thinking you a pro. They be thinking that you've been boxing for 10 years. So let's come back to the uh you y'all being in this thing for six months. Six months you should be on a high level, man. Not you just a nigga that come around. You just hey, what's what's what y'all what y'all what y'all eating tonight? What y'all drinking? You know? What's going on? What's happening? What's happening is you. You're supposed to be working. I want them out there working. That's a quote from a movie. If you can tell me what movie that's from, you're good. I want him out. I want them out there working. So guess what? You got to work, man. You got to work. It's not about the one brother here, the head of this guy. It's the whole camp. And then I got to get on the heads. It's up to you to get on these guys and and, and fucking crap crack that whip on them, man. What the hell are you what the hell are you doing in this thing for? You ain't got nothing better to do. Give diligence to make that calling an election sure. That's all I'm gonna say. If you're not diligent, the most high gonna get rid of you. Some some of y'all got put to death. So anyway. Let me just give you a couple of precepts and then I'm going to move on to the next video. First video is, I put in the word monsters, right? Lament, Lamentation 4, verse 3. Even the sea monsters draw out the breasts. They give suck to their young ones. These are sea monsters. The daughter of my people, who's the daughter of the most highest people? Israelite woman is become cruel like the, the ostriches in the wilderness. When you look up an ostrich, what they what they do, they kill their they kill their, their youngs. Let me see something. Let me go into context. Let me go into context. And really, the daughter of my people is really talking about the Israelite men and the Israelite women. If it says daughters with an S, it's talking about the woman of Israel. If it's saying daughter, it's talking about all of Israel because we're likened unto a, a woman. It says, how is the gold become dim? How is the most fine gold uh, changed? Who's the gold? Israelites. It speaks about in Isaiah 13, we shall be like a uh, fine gold, like the golden wedge of Ophir, which is um, Ophir is in America. The stones of the sanctuary are poured out in the top of every street. And we represent stones and we're on the street. This is another street speaking, uh, poured out in the top of every street because you got Jake out there wilding. And then you got the prophets out there pushing out the word. So everybody, every Israelite in America heard this word. So if they haven't acted on it, they're going to be put to death. The precious sons of Zion, which are the men, compar comparable to what? To find gold. That's why I quoted uh, partially Isaiah chapter 13. They shall be more precious than fine gold. How are they esteemed as earthen pitches, the work of the hands of the potter. So a potter, a potter makes things, right? Even the sea monsters draw out the breasts. They give suck to their young ones. The daughter of my people has become cruel like the 
like the ostriches in the wilderness. The tongue of the suckling child cleaveth to the roof of his mouth for thirst. What is that talking about? That means he's not getting no nourishment. So what is the nourishment? It's a spiritual nourishment. If we don't go out there and push that, that word out, this vibration is not going to go out and, and Jake is not going to wake up. The tongue of the suckling child, that's a brother that comes in this into this thing new, cleave it to the roof of his mouth for thirst, meaning he wants something to, to, to nutri nutrients. The young children ask bread, bread is a knowledge, and no man breaketh it, uh, breaketh it unto them. There's a saying, let us break bread. That's where you get the word company from. Uh, I'm going to have company over. You know what the word company means? It means with bread. It means break bread. That's what it means. So let me go here. Let me come on back. The scriptures speak about examining yourself, whether you be of the faith. Prove your own self. If you come in in a nonchalant attitude in this thing, there's a good chance that you're not of the elect. Second Ezra 5 verse 8, there shall be a confusion also in many places. Where are we scattered? We scattered throughout all of America, right? L.A., the West Coast, Texas, Mexico, uh, all of Central and South America. You know how many Jakes live up in Canada, man? I've been up in Canada a couple of times. You, you got a lot of Judites up there. You got a lot of Benjamin. You got a lot of Benjamites up there. You got a lot of Levite up there. You got Gad, which is what originally was up there. Uh, you got the Latin tribe. You got the Ephraimite. You got Simeon up there. When I went up there, they had a Latin uh, a music station, man. Uh, so all the tribes... Uh, pretty much most of the tribes are up there, man, in, in Canada. It's just like America. Well, Canada is like second America. Now, all the tribes are in America. It says, uh, there shall be a confusion also in many places. And the fire shall be off sent out again. Isn't fires take, taking place all over the place? And the wild beasts shall change their places and menstruous women, so it's talking about women that received their menstrual uh, cy cycle. You got jakes that'll pop women when they're on their, they like to pop them when they're on their menstrual. Man, I was never into that, brother. I, I was never into that, man. I was never into doing it in the butt either. Even before I, long before I came to the truth, women say, you can do me, and I said, no, I ain't into that. I ain't into that. Uh, anyway, it says, a menstruous woman shall what? Bring forth monsters. Now, the way they taught it, at one, uh, the seven taught it, was gremlins, niggas that sell drugs, hip hop, you know, uh, stick up kids and all that. But monsters really mean, it really means to be uh, uh, deformed, like deformed babies. But it, but it also means to be wicked. And I'm going to prove that. Then I'm going to close. And some of these motherfuckers look like me. I know niggas that look just like this, man. And what, you got Fetty Wap? He got one eye. I mean, these look like niggas I know in the hood. And I'm not playing. I'm not joking. I'm dead fucking serious, brother. You got Jakes that look like monsters, man. I'm going to talk about the monster ball. Look at this. So it says monster, right? Let me read these definitions. An imaginary is not imaginary, it's real. The monsters is out. The monsters are out there, bro. Creature, a creature is what? Someone that the most high, something that the most high created. That is typ typically large. And you got some big niggas out there in the world, man. 
Look at Shaq. That nigga's seven, seven foot tall. He wears size fucking 20, 22, 23 fucking shoes, man. Large, ugly, and frightening. Okay, let me go to this one. What defines someone as a monster? Something monstrous, especially a person of unnatural, unnatural or extremely extreme ugliness, like our woman, instead of, instead of uh, burning, instead of beauty. Deformity, wickedness. Those little kids, that you saw in the still, those are little monsters. They call them prodigies. When you look up the word prodigy, a prodigy, one of the definitions of a prodigy is a baby monster. That's what it, look it up. It says, uh, or cruelty. A cruel monster of a father. Let me see something. Let me, let me look at this one. Let me get ready to close. What they what makes a modern day monster? Someone who has done evil and goes out of their way to terrorize the public. But hold up now. Let me read that again. Let me read that again. The first well, we can picture that popped in my mind was a bunch of niggas raiding uh, 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 uh fucking BJs. A modern day English or a, a modern a modern day English, a modern day English. A monster is described as someone who has done evil and goes out of their way to terrorize the public. And that's what niggas are doing. They go out of their way terrorizing the public. So they got to get gut. If Esau don't get him, the most high damn sure won't get him. So these are monsters in training. Now there's hope for them because they're kids. You bring them into how you got to take them from the mother. The mother, you got to forget about the mother. She's she's a, she's Satan. Forget about the fucking father. He back and forth in the prison system. So anyway, with that I'm gonna say shalom. You can watch the rest of this video. Shalom.